City Hall. This is Macomb Mayor Mike Inman. It is the day before Thanksgiving 2020, and we have uh, the latest information from several different sources regarding the COVID-19 pandemic here in Macomb and McDonough County. The most recent information we have from the McDonough County Health Department, uh, again, shows a continuing trend in not only the number of cases uh, being reported countywide, but also the number of hospitalizations and unfortunately an increase in the number of deaths reported uh, uh, as COVID-19 related. So first of all, up 138 uh, total cases since we spoke last, which was about five days ago. There are currently 1,513 confirmed cases in McDonough County. And of those 1,500, almost just short of 400, uh, 388 to be exact, are still active. That's a significant number of active cases in, in our community. The bright side here is that a hundred and, excuse me, 1,087 folks are recovered, and we'll talk a little bit more about those folks in just a little bit. But uh, also our condolences going out to an additional four families, bringing the total to 38 uh, deaths related to COVID-19. So um, again, um, the numbers uh, continue to rise. They're not quite rising quite as fast as they were. Uh, but we still need to maintain some vigilance there. Let's talk a little bit about um, information uh, as it relates to recovered uh, cases. In a recent uh, partners discussion with the McDonough District Hospital, McDonough County Health Department, and the other county partners, we were advised that um, the convalescent plasma treatment is being widely used and it's been used here in McDonough County, but they're reporting a nationwide shortage of convalescent plasma. So if you're one of these almost 1,100 people in McDonough County that have had COVID-19 and have recovered, we would encourage you, uh, especially this time of year, Thanksgiving, the holidays, maybe uh, focus your, your uh, uh, thinking about giving uh, out in a very special way of yourself. Um, contact the Mississippi Valley Regional Blood Center. That information is on the bottom of your screen now. They will explain to you what it would take for you to be a donor for convalescent plasma. Um, we would encourage you to do that. Again, a national, nationwide shortage. Um, hearing some information here at the local level, then the number of hours or the time involved from the time that there's a request for that convalescent plasma uh, to, to be treated using, used for treatment by a patient in MDH, that time is increasing due, in, due to a nationwide shortage. So if, again, you're one of these 1,100 people that have uh, survived COVID, been through the COVID, now willing and able to talk about it and about how you got through it, an, an extra special opportunity for you to be part of maybe saving someone's life. So again, contact the Mississippi Valley Regional Blood Center, and they'll be happy to tell you about how you can get signed up to be part of that saving, life-saving process. Also, uh, we want to continue to remind you that um, the drive through facility at the McDonough District Hospital located on the southeast corner of their campus for COVID-19 testing is still up and running. A little quick note, it will be closed on Thanksgiving, so no opportunity to be tested on Thanksgiving, but they'll start up at their normal hours then again Friday. So um, no, no, no opportunity tomorrow, um, but again Friday during the normal hours. Their, their hours are listed at the bottom of your screen now. And uh, they have seen an increase in the number of testing, excuse me, tests being done there on a daily basis. Not to worry, uh, just encouraging that people are taking advantage of the opportunity to be tested. You may have to wait a couple of minutes, but it's uh, not, not anything to be concerned about. We want you to go out and be involved in that testing. Don't have to be symptomatic, don't to have, have to suspect it exposure. You can uh, just simply uh, hop in line out there and the folks at MDH will take care of you. Um, if you have a desire to continue to be tested, uh, but, but are looking for options, the McDonough, excuse me, the Illinois Department of Public Health will be here in Macomb again, uh, two days next week, next, uh, the th second and third, and that's Wednesday and Thursday, next Wednesday and Thursday. The times for testing are, sh are changed just a little bit due to the, the, uh, time of day that the sun is starting to set now. So it's now 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. That's next Wednesday and Thursday at Tanner Circle. Uh, that's, you come into QLOT, they'll be signed in there directing you to a, a loop around the base of Tanner Hall. There'll be IDPH staff there. This is a self-swab test. They'll get all of your information, collect all the data, hand you the swab. You'll swab your own nasal uh, passages and then give the swab back to the technician and they'll place it in uh, the sample vial to get uh, 
uh, often get tested now, the, uh, excuse me, get it uh, analyzed. They're, they're saying to allow four to seven days for the, uh, the turnaround. I would tell you that the two times that I've taken advantage of that testing over the last month or so, that's been a much more uh, rapid turnaround than that. I don't want to set an expectation there, but uh, four to seven days may not be uh, necessary. There is no cost for the testing. It's completely uh, free. If you do have an insurance, uh, health insurance provider, if you want to bring your insurance card, that's fine. It's not required. You don't have to have insurance and there's absolutely no cost. You don't have to be sick, don't have to have any symptoms. Anyone can be tested. That information is available on the bottom of your screen now and there's also a flyer at the end of uh, this video here today. Some other things we want to talk about is that you are probably following uh, many of the national and and global uh, news reports about COVID-19. Again, we want to encourage you that there is light at the end of the tunnel. It seems to be he heavily reported that sometime within the next maybe uh, two to six weeks, there'll be vaccine rolling out nationwide and that will go to the most vulnerable people at uh, first and to first responders. Uh, it will be a long process to get the vaccine completely rolled out to all the population, but it's coming. So that's encouraging. However, between now and then, we need to continue to do what we've asked you to do uh, since the onset of the pandemic. Wear a face covering, social distance, wash your hands. Three biggest weapons we have in helping mitigate the spread of this. We continue to be under the resurgent mitigation orders issued by Governor Pritzker on uh, initially on November 4th and then updated last week to be slightly more restrictive. And as we talk about some of those restrictions, uh, many of you know that um, limiting the size of gatherings, uh, limiting the number of people that can be in retail establishments, and then uh, again, one of the provisions was limiting indoor dining. So uh, tag along with that, the city council, uh, excuse me, the city applied for and the council uh, uh, concurred with uh, submitting an application for a grant, uh, a $200,000 grant to reimburse local uh, businesses that um, particularly restaurants and bars that had to incur expenses from the onset of this pandemic until today um, to allow for outdoor dining. So if you're one of those small businesses that uh, is in the restaurant business and you had to incur some expenses to keep your operations running but at the same time be outdoors, uh, check the city's website out. Here's the uh, address here uh, on the web to check that out. There's a form available for you to um, uh, look at and fill out and you can you can actually get reimbursed for that up to ten thousand dollars We have two hundred thousand dollars that was geared uh, Directly for this program. So we'd like you to take advantage of that. This was a news release the city put out earlier this week um, There is a short deadline that those receipts have to be in the city hall by December 7th um, It's pretty simple to uh, apply for and again, it's a grant. It's not a loan. This will be direct reimbursement to you as a business owner. And also to kind of go along with that as well, we uh, got city council approval to participate, or offer I should say, a program we called Ripple, Ripple 2. And this is about our uh, opportunity to help uh, reinvest in the community. Uh, we've set aside nearly $20,000 for people, anyone, anyone coming to Macomb and and shopping at any of our non-essential businesses can save their receipts. And if they, once they've accumulated $200 in uh, receipts where purchases were made at non-essential businesses, that includes restaurants and everything that a non-essential business is, save those receipts, get them to City Hall either electronically or through the mail, and we will turn around and send you a $50 Chamber of Commerce gift certificate so that you can put right back into spending again here in the city of Macomb. It's our way of doubling down on not only supporting local businesses as they try to, you know, get their, their legs up under them again after having to deal with a pandemic for so long, encourage people to come into Macomb to spend their money, and then turn around and, around and reinvesting that money right back in the community. So uh, that information is also available through the city's website. The, the connection is located here, or I should say the link, is located here at the bottom of your screen now. The form's pretty simple. Uh, it does give pretty detailed information. And it's, again, it's called the Ripple Program. And at the end of the day, it's our uh, way of helping, again, our local businesses here. And on an ongoing basis, remind people how important it is to shop locally here in Macomb. 
Again, uh, tomorrow's Thanksgiving, or by the time you read this, you may have already celebrated Thanksgiving. We hope you're taking the necessary precautions to protect you and your family as you gather. There's been a lot of talk in the, uh, in the community, across the state and across the nation about limiting gatherings uh, during the next uh, week or so. We would encourage you to the best of your, your ability to do that. We also understand and appreciate the need for social human interaction. We completely understand that and how important it is to your overall mental and physical well-being. To that extent, we would remind you to remi remember those folks that are not able to gather with their family today or during this Thanksgiving period. Um, reach out to them safely as best you can and let them know that they're being thought of and cared for the best as possible. And again, uh, think about reaching out to folks that maybe are not even in Macomb, but you have some connection with, reaching out either electronically over the phone or whatever the case may be and letting them know that you're thinking of them. Uh, it's very important as we get into this holiday period that we remember to take care of one another. It's, it, we do it anyway, we know that, but it's even more important now. So again, wash your hands, cover your face, social distance, keep our levels down as we get closer to Christmas. We can hopefully get out from under these resurgent mitigations and get a little bit closer to normal as again we keep our eye on the prize over the next several months as these vaccines roll out and, and our first significant uh, shot, no pun intended, to take care of COVID-19. So for now we're going to wish you a very happy Thanksgiving and we'll talk again soon.